In May 1989, when massive numbers of Chinese students and citizens protested in Tiananmen Square, CNN, CBS, ABC, and NBC all went to China to report on it. I remember watching CBS Dan Rather reporting live from Tiananmen Square a few nights before the tanks rolled in. He said on camera at the end of his reporting, I'll never forget today. I will tell what I saw in Tiananmen Square to my children, and they will tell it to their children. I was a college student in America at the time. His words left me profoundly moved. I was touched by the courage American journalists displayed in supporting Chinese people's fight for freedom. Now, 32 years have passed. CBS and the mainstream media have changed, and journalists like Dan Rather are gone. American mainstream media outlets have become the unofficial spokesperson of the Chinese Communist regime. In their view of the world, they have sided with totalitarian communist forces. It took the mainstream media over 10 years to report forced organ harvesting atrocities going on in China, despite mounting evidence and many witnesses. When news broke out last December of a Chinese spy associated with California Representative Eric Swalwell, who sits on the House Intelligence Committee, CNN spent 3 minutes and 16 seconds to report on it. MSNBC, NBC, CBS, and ABC did not report it at all. CNN anchor Chris Cuomo once said that the coronavirus could come from anywhere, and he believed that the virus had appeared in the U.S. as early as October 2019. Cuomo's remarks greatly delighted Beijing, and CCP propaganda quoted him to shirk its responsibility and blame America. What happened? When Bill Clinton let China join the World Trade Organization in 2001, the world dynamics shifted forever. After China joined the WTO, multiple national companies rushed to invest in China. In their two decades of dealing with the CCP, money and profit have changed these companies' objectives and priorities, and eventually their standards, ethics, and integrity. Let's take a look at how it happened, step by step. CNN's parent company, Warner Media, started investing in China shortly after China officially joined the WTO. According to a report by Chinese website, China Finance, in early 2002, Warner Brothers, which is a subsidiary of Warner Media, invested in Shanghai Paradise Cinema. In the same year, Warner Media and other major international media outlets, including the BBC, French National Radio, CBS, and Disney Group, attended the seventh annual meeting of the International Council of Television and Radio Museum in Beijing. Now, the MTR International Council was founded in 1995, and its previous six annual meetings had been held in Europe. But the year 2002 was the first time the meeting was held in Asia. China's old friend Henry Kissinger, who was then the vice chairman of the council, helped facilitate moving the meeting to Beijing. The Chinese communist leader at the time, Jiang Zemin, hosted a dinner for the delegates. Naturally, one important topic discussed at the meeting was developing the Chinese media market. In the following year, Warner invested almost 14 million yuan and held a 49% stake in Shanghai Yunhua Film City, the cinema asset under Shanghai Film Group, one of the leading film production houses in China. In 2004, Warner Brothers and a Chinese real estate company, Dalian Wanda, reached an agreement to jointly establish and operate Warner Brothers movie theaters in China. While loving the money that foreign investors pour into China, the CCP feared losing control, particularly in the area of entertainment and media, which is always an important propaganda arm used by the CCP to brainwash people. The CCP gives it a nice name by calling it the cultural field. 
So, at the end of 2005, the CCP issued a new guideline regarding foreign investments in the cultural field. It required that the Chinese side must retain the majority ownership, holding no less than 51%. This guideline was a setback for some foreign investors. In 2006, Warner withdrew from the Chinese cinema market, largely for this reason. But six years later, it was lured back. In 2012, the total number of Chinese movie screens reached 13,000. China was becoming the second largest market after the U.S. At that time, cinema investment was generating an annual growth rate of 45%. Warner couldn't resist the money-making opportunity. In June 2013, Warner Media reached a strategic partnership with China Media Capital, or CMC, the first official cultural industry investment fund of the CCP. The founder of CMC, Li Ruigang, is a CCP official. He was the former deputy director of Shanghai Broadcasting and Television Bureau of the Communist Party of China. On September 20th, 2015, Warner and CMC announced that the two organizations would begin a joint venture to build a flagship film industry, of which the Chinese company would hold 51% and Warner Brothers 49%. By now, Warner Brothers had backed down and was willing to be a minority shareholder. According to Chinese-American writer Helen Rowley, when American companies cooperate with Chinese entities, such as CMC, they must abide by the CCP's laws, including its cybersecurity law. This includes forced technology transfer and subjecting companies and data to random surveillance by the CCP. American companies were also often forced to establish data centers in China, where the CCP could directly monitor the data. All of this posed great national security risks to the U.S., but American private and public sectors ignore them for profits. One other media outlet that participated in the 2002 annual TV broadcast conference in Beijing was CBS. Let's take a look at CBS China Business. CBS TV drama had a late entry into China. Nonetheless, most Chinese are familiar with three CBS productions, The Good Wife, Two Broke Girls, and The Big Bang Theory. Particularly, The Big Bang Theory was very popular in China and had 1.5 billion views online. Exactly because of its popularity, the Chinese regime banned it in 2014 in order to protect its domestic productions. But even though the TV business was difficult for CBS, by 2010, it had quietly become the largest vertical interactive media company in China through purchasing Chinese websites. CBS Interactive China had a large lineup of top-rated websites in the technology, automobile, and fashion sectors. Around 2010, 38% or 23 out of the 60 websites that CBS Interactive owned were in China. China had become the largest market for CBSI outside the U.S. However, those 23 Chinese websites were contributing only 10% of the company's total revenue. But the lack of profitability in China did not make CBS think otherwise. The head of CBSI China, Wang Lu, was quoted as saying at the time that CBS management didn't set a limit on the investment in China. It only wanted to seize the Chinese opportunity and grow fast. He was quoted as saying, China may not be a cash cow for CBS Corporation now, but the U.S. high-level management has great hopes for the market. In addition to these businesses, CBS was cooperating with the Xinhua News Agency, which is the CCP's official mouthpiece. CBS agreed to help Xinhua get established in North America, effectively importing communist propaganda and practices into the United States. 
When Bill Clinton pushed U.S. legislators to pass the bill allowing China to join the WTO, his argument was that by accepting Communist China into the world community, the West could influence China. Unfortunately, what we saw happen was the other way around. China has influenced and corrupted the West. As CBS business in China grew bigger and bigger, it lost its backbone in facing up to the CCP's pressure. In 2019, CBS censored its own programming in the U.S. in order to appease the CCP. CBS filtered some of the contents in the third season of its drama, The Good Fight, an animated cartoon shown in one episode that included the song Banned in China was blocked and replaced with an eight and a half second play card that read, CBS has censored this content. It's said that the cartoon's original footage contained Falun Gong, the Tiananmen Square Massacre, and Winnie the Pooh, which is often used to refer to Xi Jinping. The letter N was blocked too, since it's used by Chinese in satirizing the CCP's constitutional amendment that allowed Xi Jinping to hold power indefinitely. The New Yorker's magazine quoted the producer of the show, Michelle King, as saying that the cartoon was about American entertainment and companies censoring themselves in order to appease the Chinese market. By now, most mainstream media companies have completely lost their principles and journalistic standards and are actively practicing communist-style censorship and misinformation. Their commercial interests in China have led them to become the CCP's friends, so they must agree to the CCP's value system. They have no choice but to become part of it. This is the price we pay by allowing China to enter the WTO. My next program will talk about how Bill Clinton led China into the WTO at the cost of America. Stay tuned. Please like and share my program. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.